Alright guys, how's it going? Awesome Soul here, and I am back with a concept video. This is my second one, and this is on mech legs. So this is something that a lot of the community members of Robocraft have been wanting and asking for, and it's also known that Free Jam, at least some of the team members, definitely want to add mech legs into the game. Now, whether or not they get added sooner or later, who knows. But what I'm here to talk about is how I personally would like them implemented. So the stats I'm going to be listing off for you today are all based upon T10. So just keep that in mind, they're obviously going to be lowered for lo the lower tiers. Starting off, we will have the armor. So this is an absurdly high amount of armor. If you have taken a look at the tank tracks, this is quite a big step up. To put this into perspective, it would take three rail shots to take this out. Now, the third shot only needs to do a tiny little bit of damage, but it's still three rail shots. Now, my whole idea behind these legs are, when you think of a mech, you think of this big, huge, bipedal thing, like, as in just two legs. Occasionally, you'll get um, quad mechs, which are pretty awesome, and I'm sure if this was implemented, people would make them. But what I really want to have and I want to make like a main focus of this is I want it to be viable to only have two legs. And you could, if you wanted to, make a bot with just one leg and have it hop around. And these legs would have like an auto gyro stabilizer, kind of like what tank tracks have. And sort of skis as well, if you notice, they kind of like have a magnetic grip to the ground. I don't know if you've ever tried skis, they're still only tier five, but Anyways, uh, I'll not talk about skis right now. Um, moving on to mass. These are going to have 500 for mass. Now, nowhere near as high as tank tracks, but I'll get to that a little later for my reasoning behind that. And then we have the CPU. So this is not quite double the CPU of tank tracks, but it is a pretty decent amount. Although, I didn't want to go to 100, because then we're getting a little close to megabot parts territory. I think it's fairly decent, because if you wanted four legs, that would take up a pretty big chunk of your CPU. So that would sort of, again, encourage people to use less legs. And, well, simply because they have the stats to make them viable. And the robot ranking is 25% higher than tank tracks. Again, uh, I want to definitely push the whole only two is viable type thing. And then connection points. Now, tank tracks at tier 10, they have nine connection points. This would only have six connection points. Now, I still think it's gonna be quite tanky, especially since they're removing anti gunbrella in the recent update. I know that's kind of dating the video, but uh, anyways, <laughs> uh, moving on. So the price in RP is a fair step up from tank tracks, but that's understandable. Uh, price in GC is in line with the price in RP and sort of comparison. Uh, now the top speed. So the top speed is going to be the slowest of all movement parts at 75 miles per hour, and that's the top speed. So just to give a comparison, the next fastest thing would be walker legs at 90 miles per hour as their base speed. Uh, the ground speed, of course. But if we go on, the they have the attribute to crouch, like walker legs. But I was thinking something like, if you wanted to make a rail version, perhaps crouching would lower your movement speed, but allow you to recover slightly faster from accuracy loss. So that might be a nice little perk. And then, going back to the mass thing, the attribute is jump. Now, the, uh, the jump attribute is not going to be quite as powerful as the walker legs, or I guess what would most likely be renamed to the crawler legs, how I would probably rename it personally. So they're going to have like a slight charge up to them, or at least this is what I would like to have. So it's not an instant jump. They would be about like 0.5 to 1 second a charge up. They would jump in the air, and then whatever thrust you have still could propel you upwards and forwards. However, uh, the mass being 500 a pop, you would 
preferably only want two legs if you still wanted to have some jumping capability, but with four legs, you'd pretty much not want to build a jumping bot. And even then, jumping isn't going to be the most viable thing. It's still a possibility, because I'm all for um, creative freedom in Robocraft. And then finally, so going in line with the new update, the overclocking attribute, as all parts have them. So the overclocking on these legs would be the turning. Now I don't mean the weapon turning, obviously that's completely separate, but the actual rotation. So if you hit, you know, A or D to turn, left or right, that would start out fairly slow. Not completely sluggish, but it would still take a little while to turn around. But as you level up, the ability to turn around and sort of react a lot faster would be greatly increased. And that would make it quite a powerful thing with the ability to jump as well. You'd still be able to react, but you'd still have this massive tanky force propelling you along. Just as a finishing note here, I'd like to say that I'm sure there's some of you out there that are going to be like, oh, wow, these are incredibly tanky and they can jump? This seems really overpowered. Uh, what I say to that is, one, if you want a jumping bot, you're most likely going to only have to have two legs. Or possibly one, as I stated previously, it is still possible to have a single leg hopping bot, but not that viable. Also, these are much larger targets than tank tracks. Now, I know tank tracks are quite long, however, they're very short. They're not very tall. And they're also much easier to armor due to the more connection points they have on multiple sides. These legs would have multiple connection points, yes, but they would all be at the very tip top of the leg. And if you wanted to protect them, you would have to have a very cumbersome skirt of either blocks or electroplates. And it just wouldn't be that good to look at, and it would go through a lot more CPU. There's a lot more surface area to cover, and you need more to cover it. So, that covers everything I wanted to talk about in this concept video. Thank you for watching. Uh, feedback is always nice. I think I did a fairly good job of balancing this out, at least for uh, what I see as the role that these legs should fill. Let me know what you think down below. How would you have mech legs if you could implement them into the game? Anyways, guys, uh, I've been the Awesome Soul. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.